I'm cooking my way through Fergus Henderson's nose to tail cookbook. Come on down to my house, let's eat. Let's eat. Come on down to my house, my treat. Yeah, let's eat. Been all around the world, too, too. I'm a good girl. Come on down to my house, let's eat. Come on down to my house, let's eat. Thumbs up. I'm out. Let's see. Let's see. Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of The Whole Beast. We are here cooking my way through Fergus Henderson's wonderful cookbook, Nose to Tail. And today we are doing tampara, jellied rabbit. So that's what we got going on today, jellied rabbit. Um, <laughs> Super excited about this one because the name it definitely might, I don't know, weird some people out. <laughs> and definitely when I read it, I was like, Jelly Rabbit, what can that be? And I kind of immediately went to Jello in my head, which is weird. I don't know. That's, I don't know. I just imagine basically like <laughs> a little, <laughs> a little rabbit just like surrounded in like red jelly with like some marshmallows on the side and I don't know it just that's what I thought of um anyway so today <laughs> I did a little head start so first it's basically like a three-day process so uh I just kind of went ahead and did the day before process already so we basically took our rabbit and soaked it in white wine overnight with all the shallots. So we have all the shallots in here. They've been smoked. I basically opened this up this morning. It was like just a whiff of delicious, like succulent shallots. Uh, and then we have a rabbit in here. So this is our beautiful rabbit right here. Here we go. I don't want to move it around too much because it's soaking wet. <laughs> but uh, I'll move it forward a little bit so you can see. So this is our beautiful rabbit just dripping in white wine. <laughs> So that's that. And yeah, so first step would be to soak this overnight in white wine of your choosing uh, with the shallots, super easy. So just slice up the shallots nice and fine, toss them in there, throw your thawed rabbit. If it's frozen, don't put it in frozen. Uh, or if you have a fresh rabbit from your butcher like I did, just toss it in there and then put your wine in, cover it up and you're all good. And basically we'll set this aside. Okay, and then the next part after I wipe off all this blood and <laughs> white wine <laughs> all over my counter. Uh, okay, so that's in your fridge now marinating overnight. This next step, you can also do the day before if you want, or you can do it the day of. We are basically going to make what's going to be the jellied part of this recipe. We are going to take these beautiful, lovely pig's trotters. Mm, yummy. And so we've got two of them. You notice that they're different sizes, but I have a one front and one back leg. So you can use both front and both back, whatever your butcher has for you. That's what my butcher gave me uh, this week. And we are going to put those in a pot with chicken stock, peppercorns, some fresh thyme, yum, and some garlic. Excuse me, I just had to burp. <laughs> I just burped inside of <laughs> Gross. <laughs> it's all good. Okay, so that's the second part of this dish and we're gonna basically cook that in this pot for three and a half hours, I think. Let's just look. I forget. Um, the good thing about having the cookbook always right here is that I can just look back at the recipe anytime I want. <laughs> so, ba -ba 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 -ba. yeah, so gently simmer, keeping your eye on it for three hours. Okay, and then after that, we strain the mixture and then we reduce it down to half and then let it cool. 
So, like I said, if you wanna do both of these things the day before, you totally can. Soak your rabbit in the wine, put it in your fridge, get this stuff going, boil it for three and a half hours, strain, reduce it by half, and put it in the fridge. Then you're ready to go for the next day, and it's like super easy setup for sure. So that's what we're just gonna do. It's a very quick setup right now. We are going to take Mr. Piglets over here. Anybody? <laughs> I don't know why I just thought of doing this right now. <laughs> this little piggy went to the market. This little piggy is staying home. No, wait, is that how you do it? Oh my gosh, I forget how to do it. Wait, this little, this little piggy went to the market. This little piggy stayed home. This little pig ate roast beef. Fuck, I forget the nursery rhyme. Oh my gosh, I can't even like think of it right now. I feel, I feel so horrible. Oh my God, okay, if you remember this nursery rhyme that you used to do on your toes, you know, this little piggy, it, it's, I swear, this little piggy went to the market, this little piggy stayed home. This little piggy ate roast beef, this little piggy had none. And this little piggy went wee 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 all the way home. I think that's it. <laughs> Anyways, if that's it or if it's not it, make a comment below because it's gonna drive me crazy. <laughs> so let's put Mr. Piggy's trotters in the pot. Okay, so they go in the pot. And basically, super easy, like I said, you're just gonna put your bunch of peppercorns in here. Oh, bunch of thyme. This is not peppercorn, this is thyme. Um, and actually, you want to tie it. So this is an elastic band, which I don't wanna put in, but I'm just gonna do it now and then I'll put string around it after because I don't know if I have any butcher's twine, so I might have to go to the garage. So you wanna bundle it up because it's gonna be easier to take out, otherwise you're gonna have all the fucking time just fucking floating around everywhere. <laughs> so we're gonna put that in like that, and then your garlic, you, yep. It's okay, I'm just the juggler of the garlic. <laughs> You're gonna put this in whole. You don't need to cut it, break it, anything. Just put it in whole. And then you're gonna put all your peppercorns, lovely little peppercorns in as well. And then we have our beautiful chicken stock from our butcher as well. And this is already like, you can see like super gelatinous. Oh, oh, I just, Oops, clean up my aisle four, clean up my aisle four. <laughs> Shit. Okay, and then we're gonna, this is already super gelatinous, which is really good because if you buy it from the grocery store, it's just like liquid, which you know that wasn't made, very nice. So if you have a really nice butcher that you go to, get his stock because it will be nice and gelatinous. Okay, so we're gonna throw that in there. And voila, that's done and done. So we got everything in this pot here, you can see. And we are now going to simmer this or boil it. Oh my God, I'm having like the biggest brain fart right now. Uh, I'm pretty sure, pin, da, 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 da. gently simmer and then bring to a boil. No, no. <laughs> First snore of the season. <laughs> Sorry, just gently simmer for three hours. There's no boiling. So gently simmer this for three hours, covered. So we are going to cover it, gently simmer for three hours. And that is that. I feel like the whole thing was way more complicated than it needed to be, so I apologize. But that was actually very simple. And once you read the instructions that I'll leave at the bottom, you'll be like, wow, that was way less complicated than Maddie just made it seem. So we're now gonna put this on. <laughs> and we are simmering that for three and a half hours-ish, uh, and then we are gonna move on to the next step, okay? So we'll just leave that, do its thing, and then once it's done, we'll return for the next step. Bye-bye.
Okay, guys, so we have our pot. <laughs> Hot, hot, hot. Okay, so get one of these. You know, actually, this uh, in Italian is one of my favorite words, and like translation is tea towel, and it's mapina, because it reminds me of mapinas. <laughs> I just think it's hilarious. Uh, yeah, so these are called mapina, and uh, I think it's like down south, like down in like Sicily and. Calabrese and stuff like that. Anyways, you got my lapina. No, mapina, not lapina. Mapina. Yeah, mapina, I think. I have to ask my friend. Anyways, to open this up, so this was just on the stove for whoo, three and a half hours. So doesn't really smell like much. It <laughs> smells like pork fat, really. All that gelatinous from the pig trotters has now like just released itself into the stock. So we are going to strain it. Um, I'm gonna put this over here. And I'm just gonna get an extra bowl for the big pieces of the trotter. So I'm gonna get those out first. So, for, for this recipe to, woo, ah, nice. Look at that. Look at all that gelatinous deliciousness. Look at that, yummy. That's what I call a nice dinner. So if you want, there are like little pieces of meat on there like this, you know, like this little piece of meat <laughs> all over the trotter. You can spend the time to pick it out to add to your dish. I'm not going to, but totally up to you. If you want, you can. So let's just get the kind of bigger pieces out of there. All right, so got all the nice big chunks out of there. And now we are going to Strain the rest of it into this smaller pot. Here we go. Nice. All right. Put that back on the stove. And we are now going to take this liquid that's in this pot right here and we're gonna reduce it by half. So that's not gonna be a lot. This is gonna, I'm just gonna put this on here so it doesn't mess up my cutting board too much. As if, there. Okay, so now we have the rest of the stock or whatever in here, the gelatinous stock that will be added to the rabbit later. So now we're gonna reduce this by half. Okay, so we got that going there. And like I said, so you have all of this stuff that you can kind of go through and pick off the meat if you want. Um, but like I said, I'm not really gonna spend that time doing that. <laughs> Cause there's not really a lot of meat on there. Like you'll get like maybe like a quarter cup of meat. That's it. But, but yeah, I don't think I'm gonna do that. So then the next step we have to do will be, let's look in our little cookbook here for Jelly Rabbit. Um, ba -ba 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 -da -ba -da -ba -da. Okay, so strain and return to pan, reduce by half and allow to cool. So that's what we got going on back there. And then we have uh, our rabbit that has been pre-marinated in the fridge for a day. So we're gonna take that out and we're gonna mix the rabbit and the marinade with the trotter stock and add the bay leaves and then check our seasoning. And he says here, remember that we are eating, this is a cold dish, this jellied rabbit. So usually when you eat something cold, you wanna heighten the um, seasoning a little bit. So he says, make sure you give it a good flavor boost. And then you're gonna put it in a, 
pan basically and we are going to add a little bacon to the bottom cover and place an immediate oven for two and a half hours until it's cooked and then we throw it in the fridge overnight to serve cold the next day okay so like i said three day process so you can basically do the marinating of the rabbit and this stock the day before then you can cook it in your oven that's day two and then day three you eat it cold the jellied rabbit okay so that's that let's get our rabbit from the fridge and uh we'll add the stock once it's reduced and then we'll get it in the oven okay okay guys so we're back with the jellied rabbit we have that stock uh, cooling behind us that we reduced by half and we have brought back out our marinated rabbit here uh, and then we need this baking dish here because this is going to go in the oven and we are going to put a little bit of bacon on the bottom but I don't have any bacon and the butcher was out but they had this beautiful, beautiful guanciale. Look at this. Look at how wonderful that is. Look at this. This beautiful, beautiful chunk of guanciale. And everybody knows that guanciale is from the cheek, right? Right here. This beautiful part of the pig. Uh, probably one of my most favorite things that comes out of a pig, to be honest. Uh, like I said um, before one of my episodes, the neck is one of my favorite things to eat on like any bird or kind of animal because there's so much juicy flavor in there. And the cheek is definitely like the jowl for larger animals is definitely my go-to like just secret love. Um, you can leave us alone in a room. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but no, honestly, like guanciale is definitely a staple for anybody's home kitchen. Um, it just adds a lot of flavor. You can add it just to add some really good saltiness and fattiness to any dish, really. You can cut it super thin. You can cut it thick and have like, like lardoons, which is like a big piece of fat. Um, or you can like, when you slice it thin, if you heat up, oh, okay. Oh, it makes me want to make this right now. So warm up a piece of sourdough in your oven toast it slightly when it's warm out of the oven slice this super thin and just like literally like place it on top of your toast it is so fucking good guanciale toast it is and if you want to put some grass-fed butter oh underneath oh my god i'm like salivating on the inside I'm having a moment, okay? I want to eat that right now. <laughs> it is so good. It's just so simple. Like one of the most simplest, simplest things you could do. And it is so fucking tasty. Like simple, toast and guanciale, but warm toast. Warm, like a bosom. Okay, back to this. So we don't have any bacon, so we're gonna put some guanciale in the bottom, look at that. Yeah. That's the sound you wanna hear. So we're gonna put some guanciale in the bottom instead. So let me see, I'm just gonna cut probably this way. And we're just gonna cut some pieces That'll like almost resemble bacon, just a little bit thicker. Look at that. Nice, eh? Nice. I could literally probably eat this. Ah. Uh, but I need some warm sourdough toast. And I need it sliced thinner. Like if you're gonna do like, this is like a little thick, go to your butcher and ask them to slice it for you. Or if you have a slicer in your home, perfect. Or you could also throw it in the freezer for a little bit and it makes it a lot easier to cut. But we're just gonna cut a couple pieces to go in the bottom basically of the pan while the rabbit is roasting in the oven. Um, 
Yeah. But if you have bacon, you can use bacon as well. This is just to add a layer of fat while the rabbit is cooking and give it that like saltiness for sure. Cause you definitely, this is a dish that's gonna be eaten cold, like I already said. So you definitely wanna bump up your flavor for sure. And subbing the guanciale for the bacon is a good way to do that. So let's get down to the end here and watch me cut off my finger. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> okay, so let's put this here and basically just like chuck all of this into the bottom of your pan. Look at that, it's so fatty, it's sticking. Ha, I love it. Uh, this one's stuck. Hello, whatever. Okay, so we basically are gonna cover whatever we can of the bottom of the pot, like that, with the guanciale or bacon. Okay. And just kinda make sure you can cover whatever surface you can with that. And we are then going to place the rabbit on top of this. So, okay, here we go. We got our rabbit here. Look at that bad boy. All right, and we're gonna place him right in there, nice and nestled on the guanciale. Oh, he looks like he's leaving. So beautiful, so peaceful. Aww. It's gonna be tasty. <laughs>
And basically I am having rabbit for breakfast tomorrow then <laughs> because we have to leave it set in the fridge after it's cooled down from the oven. Uh, and yeah, so we will do that. Um, I'm trying to think if we need to do anything else besides have a fucking piece of this on toast, baby. That's what I'm gonna fucking do right now. I literally wish I could eat this like a hot dog. <laughs> so good. Okay, that will be my snack after I wrap up and this is gonna go in the oven and then we will see you tomorrow in my PJs for some jellied rabbit in the morning. All right, see you later. promised to finish off our jellied rabbit video. Uh, little tired, <laughs> uh, but that's okay. Nothing, <laughs> nothing like a fresh pot of jellied rabbit to wake you up in the morning. Um, I said I was gonna come in my PJs, but I actually sleep naked, so I don't own PJs. So I put on my nice little robe, um, so I didn't have to do this video naked. <laughs> Okay, so let us take a look in here. I'm very curious <laughs> to see what this beholds. Wow. <laughs> okay, this is hilarious. Um, so there's like some sort of obviously like fat like rim on the top. And then underneath is like the, the jelly, the jelly part. Look at, see that? I don't know if that, you could really see that. Let's see, I mean, I might be able to just hold it up this way too because it's like jellied. So <laughs> there, there's the jellied rabbit. <laughs> Yeah. All right. So I guess let's get a plate and uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Here we go. So I guess, I don't know. I don't know if you could like keep the fat or something because there's a lot of there's a lot of fat on here, right at the top. Um, you can definitely, like, look at that. That's all nice fat. So I'm gonna get a jar and keep that. All right, I have my jar and I'm definitely going to keep this fat because I can definitely reuse it during cooking times, during cooking times, other cooking times. My brain is not working yet. I have not had coffee, but I'm about to have rabbit and rabbit is, uh, is um, yeah, just like a nice cup of coffee. Just like a nice, <laughs> Oh my gosh, okay. I don't know how much more I can skim off here, but I'll try. There's some nice, nice bits of fat here. No waste in this cookbook, that's for sure. No waste. All right, so I've kind of gotten what I can there. I'll just get a new spoon. <laughs> Okay, and uh, maybe I'll just get like a big spoon. Big spoon! Okay, so look at that. Jelly, jellied rabbit. Look at that. 
Smells really good. Mmm. Yummy. Very flavorful. Nice. So, I guess you just, yeah, scoop off the jelly. Scoop off the jelly. Hey, look, the jelly matches my robe. Look at that. Look at that. We're matching. That's so funny. Jelly is matching my robe. I love it. There's jelly flying all over the place. Okay, so now we need to get some rabbit. I guess I need a knife. <laughs> let's cut some, let's cut like the hind leg off here. There we go. The jellied rabbit hind leg. Look at that. Nice piece of jelly on there. Mmm. That's good. That's really good. Oh, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Wow. I'm actually very surprised at how good this tastes cold. Oh. I just hit my bone. Ow! Ow. Okay, that'll wake up in the morning. Nice. So, even these shallots. These shallots are super good. Cold. Nice. So, I mean, yeah, you just kind of dig in, eat the jelly, eat the rabbit, and there you have it. Ah, I'm a foe and I don't even know it. Nice. Yeah, this is tasty. So, that's my breakfast. Screw bacon and eggs, motherfuckers. I got a jelly rabbit. And it tastes motherfucking good. You know what? I'm very surprised with this dish. I definitely was a little weirded out by just the process and like the overnight and then eating it cold, I think. But wow, this is this is very good. And like get some like mustards and like Cornish oh, Cornish hens, Cornish pickles. Um, you know, like a nice like crusty loaf of sourdough. And that would go so good. So I'm definitely gonna finish this little small plate for breakfast, but there's still the entire jellied rabbit in here. <laughs> so I got a lot of rabbit and a lot of jelly to get through. Um, but yeah, it's kind of fun. Like, look, it's just like, it's literally just like jello, like when we were kids, but it's for adults. It's tasty and it's savory and it's good for you. All the collagen in here, girls, please. We're gonna look good, yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's fun to eat. It's so fun to eat. Oh my goodness, you're just like, ba 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 ba. And you feel like a kid. I feel like a kid right now. I'm half naked in a robe at 7.30 in the morning, eating jelly rabbit, and I feel like a kid. <laughs> that was good. It is so good. All right. You just literally, yeah. My robe's getting in the way. Get another piece of rabbit and put it with my jelly. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. Good, 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 good. Oh, my book's falling out. <laughs> Check that back in. Um, yeah, all right. There we have it. We got some saved fat for later that we skimmed off the top so we can fry something with that for sure. Got a whole lot of jelly rabbit to go around. So I know what I'm having for dinner. <laughs> but all in all, this was a really fun recipe. And I love the use obviously of the trotters because usually those would just be thrown out, right? Um, but this is great. 
Uh, definitely a lengthy process, so three days, but not like too complicated. It's just you gotta make sure you prep and then it's no problem, it's easy. So really, really enjoyed this recipe. Very surprised at the jelly. The jelly, the jelly plate. Um, super fun. And I'm excited to get into the next recipe with you guys next week. So I'm gonna make myself a coffee and finish my plate of jelly rabbit. Enjoy your morning, guys, or afternoon or evening, whenever you're watching this. <laughs> Bye, see you next week.